This video is sponsored by War Thunder. Elves, truly one of God's greatest failures. Legend has it that 2700 years ago, a dumpster full of roadkill and genetic material was struck by lightning, and from it emerged a series of grotesque abominations that we now refer to as the Elves. I know this because it was my dumpster, and I saw the whole thing. Ever since that day, it has been my personal mission to wipe them off the face of the Earth. And today, in Total Warhammer 3, we're going to be doing just that. Because we're playing as the Beastmen, a gang of marauding and barely sentient savages that want nothing more than to crush your skull with a gigantic boulder. Our goal is to reach Ulthuan, destroy everything, and erect several herdstones so that no one can ever settle these tainted lands again. Do we have what it takes, or will a late game crisis caused me to annihilate my computer. There's only one way to find out. Okay, here we are in the Obsidian Peaks. We have an army led by Torox the Brass Bull. In case you're unfamiliar with Torox, he's he's a one-man killing machine. I've never personally seen him cry, and he instills great terror in me on a daily basis. The rest of his army is composed of Ungor herds and uh, a couple of Minotaur. The Minotaur are quite good. In fact, Torox specializes in them, so hopefully late game we'll be able to make an entire army of angry bull people. The Ungor are... they're like the lower class, second class beast men. You know, no one respects them. They barely meet the threshold for being considered sentient, and generally, you want to just kind of throw them into suicidal situations to allow your Minotaur to, you know, flank and, and, and do the things they need to do. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is introduce ourselves to our neighbors. Now, our neighbor is a dark elf, a uh, sex criminal, almost certainly. All dark elves are. And her name is Alyssa, but everyone calls her a pedophile. So we're going to just start by killing her at Clar Carond. Now, this is a Pyrrhic victory, and I could, I could auto-resolve this easily. But sometimes, you have to make a statement. This is a siege battle. I hate siege battles. Jesus Christ. Okay, I've made the horrible mistake of accidentally accepting a siege battle, but we're going to make the most of it. You can see here that Torox is, uh, he's just a hulking monstrosity, but his one weakness is that he's, he's fairly large and susceptible to being shot by archers. Now, on the other hand, archers are fairly susceptible to being chopped into small pieces by Torox. So as you can see here, the virgin dark elf is just no match for the Chad Minotaur. <laughs> Holy shit, <laughs> that guy's entire torso exploded. Wow, okay. Even I wasn't expecting that. Alright, so we've achieved victory in our first attack, and we've managed to sustain some casualties. Now, mostly that's because this was a siege battle, and I refuse to play siege battles on anything other than three times speed. It's a moral stance I take because I don't like them. But the important thing here is that we can now convert this settlement into a herdstone. You see, beastmen don't really play like a traditional faction, they're a horde faction, so mostly we just run around messing up everyone else's day. In fact, I'm going to make this herdstone here, and what this does is it has converted the entire region into a blood grounds, which you can see here by all this, this red area. And the more blood I can collect in the blood grounds, then the higher level ritual I can perform. Once I perform the ritual, it basically kind of like desecrates all of these settlements so that no one can settle them again as long as this herdstone is here. So the gameplay loop is to make a herdstone, kill a bunch of shit, perform a ritual to get rewards, and then no one can settle this area pretty much ever again. And so that's the tactic we're going to be using to deal with the elves. We're going to make a series of herdstones, hopefully on the inner ring, of Ulthuan, and then Ulthuan, it, it, it'll be uninhabitable. That's as God intended, Ulthuan will be just, it will belong to the beasts. Okay, so we can technically build some things at the Herdstone. Mostly, it's just very simple things to help us kill more people. Personally, I enjoy the Winds of Malady. It has a small chance of creating a plague that can affect our enemies, and whenever they get in a fight with us, they start off the fight winded, which is really not the state you want to be in when this guy is trying to kill you. Now, obviously, the goal here is to go to Ulthuan and slaughter as many elves as possible, but honestly speaking, the elves are pretty strong, so we're going to need to develop our society a little further, unlock some better units, and just get some practice in on these surrounding factions. And then we'll move south and hop the ocean, go to Althuan, and uh, see how that goes. So the blood drive continues with Venom Glade. If I can destroy this, I'll get six points. And then we're up to Circle of Destruction, and it'll, it'll be a great time. Let's actually start with the Circle of Destruction. We also have this meter here. It's basically like a momentum meter. It's called Bestial Rage. And the higher it is, the more benefits we get. 
and the lower it is, well, it starts messing with us. And the way you fill it is by killing a lot of people in a short amount of time. So this really uh, incentivizes like a meathead play style of just killing everything nearby you at all times. Not great for politics, but it really simplifies your decision making process. It's like a flow chart that just looks like, is it alive? Yes, kill it. Okay, fantastic, we've achieved victory. The elves are dead and my bestial rage bar is quickly filling. When it gets to max level, I start slamming my forehead on the desk in excitement. So we're going to raise this settlement and that's going to give us some points towards our ritual. You can see a, a fireball forming above this uh, herdstone. That's good, it's a good thing. Now you may be wondering, why do we want to perform these rituals at the Herdstone in the first place? And what does it do for us? Well, it gives us ruination. The more ruination we have, the more units we can field. I need 60 more marks of ruination, and then I can field the Sangors or a hundred more to field the minotaurs. So this is kind of like how we research things. We can only have a limited amount of each of these units, but once we have them unlocked, we can spend dread to increase our unit capacity until we can field an entire army of Cygors, Gorgons, Elemental of Beast, Jabber Slice, all of the weird things you just generally don't want to encounter when you're playing a, a human army. Additionally, we can gather dread. This is just our primary resource. We can gather dread to unlock new heroes and lords. Now, this is one thing that I've learned about playing the Beastmen. I used to feel annoyed when I would destroy a city. See, with a circle of destruction. Well, that one was, that city was really asking for it, but I would destroy the city and then another army would come in and colonize it. I would take that personally, but it's actually a good thing because then I can destroy the city again and rack up more points. So we really just want to be running the clock up, killing as many people as possible, destroying as many cities as possible, and sometimes your enemies will actually just help you in that regard. Um, and it looks like Kylostra... I, I always used to pronounce her name Cloistra. Anyway, it looks like Slostra... Sl it looks like this fat fucking fish lady is gonna take the settlement. So once we finish off the elves down here, she'll be the next target. Okay, we're moving on the Venom Glade. This will be the last outpost from the, uh, the Dark Elf faction. Okay, I took a few casualties because I was too lazy to fight that battle manually, but their, uh, their faction is now extinct, which is very nice for us. And fortunately for the Beastmen, it doesn't actually cost me anything to recruit new units, and there's no upkeep either. These kind of funny little goat people, they don't have a very profound understanding of personal finance, so I can field a pretty large army and replenish my army without too much trouble. An oddly pleasant experience playing the Beastmen so far, I won't lie. We've just been issued a quest to defeat this army. Now, I'm going to warn you, it's never just this army. The quest always says, oh, just kill some Dark Elves. Then you get in there, there's like 500,000 people. So we're going to want to improve our military a little more before we uh, before we tackle that one. Okay, Silostra has colonized the Venom Glade. We're going to go back there and beat the ever-living shit out of her. Now, technically speaking, Silostra is, I think, rank 81, and we're strength rank 151. So on paper, we should have no chance of killing her. But I am a animal, a wild beast of the woods. I run around on all fours and, and bite people in public and give them rabies. And furthermore, I don't know how numbers work. So this whole strength rating system, I'm just going to disregard it for the entire playthrough. Okay, we could auto-resolve this, but it would kill just, just about everyone. So we're going to fight them. But before we go any further, I have to tell you something. War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat sim ever made, and it's available for free on PC and console. You can take command of over 2,500 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships, ranging from the biplanes of old to the modern tanks and jets we have today. Choose your favorite weapons and allow War Thunder to envelop you like a warm blanket with its detailed vehicles, realistic graphics, and authentic sound effects. There are over 70 million people that want to liquefy you with a 120mm smoothbore cannon, so I suggest you dive in today and start fighting them off. Personally, I enjoy the damage x-rays, which help explain what happens to the human body after it has been hit by 50 BMG. Other than that, the variety of game modes and customization options are fantastic, and the game is so well optimized you could run it on a treadmill. I want you to use my sign up link in the pinned comment to download the game for free on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox. It'll give you a bonus pack with multiple premium vehicles, an XP boost, 7 days premium account, and 100,000 silver lions, along with my personal and undying affection. Thank you, War Thunder. Now back to the video. These things are a little concerning, just, just visually. I don't like the looks of this, but 
Otherwise, I'm sure we'll be okay. Yeah, this is... This is looking a lot better here. Solastra's, uh army is largely disintegrating. There's a couple of more hardy units on the map, like the damned Knights Errant. She is, she's relatively tough, but you know what, they're just all blobbing up around Torox, and that's just, that's never going to be a winning strategy, so this should be fine. Okay, Silostra's main army has been defeated, and so this battle should basically pave the way for our war path all the way through her empire. She'll probably have a couple of secondary armies that we might have to fight, but usually this early in the game, when you kill the main enemy, it's pretty much it. Unsurprisingly, she's decided it might be a nice time to call for a peace treaty. She's offered me her entire inheritance. I don't know what numbers are, I don't care. Since we're a horde faction, we don't really have any cities per se, but Torox himself is kind of his own mobile city. And you can see we can kind of upgrade these little buildings to get access to new units. And currently we have unlocked the Gore Herd, which are slightly better than the Ungore, but I still don't respect them personally. However, these guys have great weapons. That's pretty nice. So we're going to get a few of them. Okay, well, I've waited around for a little while, but our enemies don't want to push into the blood grounds. They're actually kind of hiding out over here, so I think what I'm going to do is just perform our ritual right now. We'll get 22 marks of ruination. That's not great, but it'll, you know, it's a start. Once we get 25, we reach ruination level 2. That unlocks all of these things here, you can see, and it allows us to field more armies. So mo the more ruination we have, the, the more capacity we have to field armies and uh, more capacity for each individual unit. Right now, nothing great. But I am having a grand old time walking around in uh, Silostra's territory and just disregarding her entire existence because I'm really not worried about her. Okay. This is the capital city of the Vampire Pirates, the Twisted Glade. I don't actually like our odds right now. Giving us a valiant defeat, high casualties. That's not good. But looking at her army, it doesn't look that terrifying. The vampires usually have a, a lot of really powerful ranged units, but she has like one, two, three... I guess these deck droppers are kind of annoying. Uh, I don't know, I'm not that worried. I'll just lay siege to them because I really don't like fighting siege battles. So hopefully they'll come out and attack me. Oh, okay, so I don't know if you saw that in the background. Alithanar just finished off uh, Silostra Dyerfin's army. So this is... She's in a pretty desperate situation now, which is why she's come out of her gates and she's trying to attack me. Um, I'll take the fight, and I think I'll win. The plan is just walk at them. We're just gonna walk them down. Also, as Beastmen, a lot of our units are actually hidden just by being, you know, kind of in the forests and, and near the forests. Like, the, it's hard for our enemies to see exactly where we're at. So we can usually creep up on people pretty good before, before they see us. Okay, this is going all right. Um, some of my units are just being absolutely annihilated by bats, and that's a little suboptimal, but otherwise I'm not detecting too many issues with any of this. Something you have to try to avoid in this game, this is just beginner stuff, and I it happens to me all the time, blobbing your units up like this, there's no need for it. Get the units out and around, and then try to circle on your enemies. Hit them from behind, you do a lot more damage. Get at their archers, helps a lot. Oh, this is a great opportunity for me to summon a Saigor and see how that goes. There he is, big man. Big man, throw a boulder at all these little men, how about? Okay. We need to work on the aim, but everything else, great. <laughs> Even being within like a hundred feet of Torox is a real occupational hazard. It doesn't matter if you're on his team or not, he's just killing everything out here. Okay, enemy army is basically fully crumbling. We're just waiting for them to give up at this point. Fantastic. Okay, so we've exterminated the vampires. The Drowned are now its faction destroyed, and I've taken the, the Twisted Glade as the next Herdstone, meaning that our new Blood Grounds is... Oh, it's actually... There's a lot of overlap, but I definitely have to kill the Black Forests and the Monoliths, which means good old Alithanar is, uh... Well, he's... He's gonna have to die. All right, next target is going to be Alithanar. Who is Alithanar? I don't know, an insane psychopath. He was dropped on his head as a baby and he fell down 42 flights of stairs. So now I'm going to perform a uh, late state. <laughs> what am I talking about, bro? I'm just like rambling. He's got some strong weapons and he's also level 14. And yeah, his, ar his army looks, <sighs> this is gonna suck. All right, we can do it though. Yeah, this is a valiant, valiant defeat auto resolve. 
This is a Pyrrhic Victory Auto Resolve. Against my better judgment, I think I'm going to try to fight this just because all of his army is just, there's no front line. It's just archers, which means that I should just be able to run them down. 90% uh, of our army is hidden. Positionally, they might have a hard time accounting for that. You can see the balance of power is certainly not in our favor. Okay, any second now, I'm expecting to get shot in the side of the head with an arrow. And there it is. <laughs> <laughs> we just kind of walked into a bunch of hidden shadow warriors and they're they're gonna focus fire the minotaurs down pretty hard but i think we can close the gap on them in this relatively short time frame i think we can do it once we make contact with them they're gonna have a really hard time getting away okay that's good we've got them on the run now we've engaged them with the minotaurs usually these elves they're very annoying because they can shoot and move at the same time they're just dreadful to interact with this is just going to be a painful fight because it's going to be me chasing archers with with infantry which is like not good for anyone like no one enjoys that experience the infantry hate it the archers really hate it and the people managing the units it's just painful all right the battle's just about done all that's left is well everyone's dead except for olithanar so we just have to go find him and chop him up a few times there he is as <laughs> as soon as i targeted olithanar with the Sigor, he uh he started running away what's wrong buddy don't want to be crushed by a gigantic boulder it's a shame it's like the nicest thing that I could possibly do to you, given all of the options. Okay, we're getting close to unlocking the fire pit, which will finally allow us to unlock minotaurs. You better believe my entire army is, by late game, just going to be minotaurs. We're going to continue our path up to the monoliths, hopefully get some good fights in. Go to the monoliths, decisive victory, easy loot and raise. This gives us a few things, but most importantly, gives us enough money to construct the fire pit. Okay, by utilizing the beast paths, I've managed to sneak my way into a Lithanar's territory, and I'm going to take the Black Creek Spire, shouldn't be hard at all, and this will be our next herdstone. It'll be kind of a base camp. And from here, I think I can just farm a Lithanar for more and more blood. He's a pretty strong faction, and though I've taken some of his territory, I don't think that I've totally crippled his capabilities, you know, to fight me. So I'm just gonna let him build an army, and then I'll destroy it, and then he'll come back, and I'll destroy it again. And hopefully we'll achieve enough Ruination to unlock the Ruination level 3. So we'll need to get about 30. I'm gonna try to bait Elithanar into fighting us, just because I, I really don't respect his army. I, I think I can take two armies at the same time. He decides to go for it. Oh, this isn't good. My army failed to spot an enemy ambush. They have launched a surprise attack, surely giving them the upper hand. Look at, look at what a little fucking cuck Alithanar is. He won't even make eye contact with, with the bull. He's just staring at the ground all defeated. Okay, we're gonna mess you up, man. You shouldn't have ambushed us like this. So there I was, walking through the field with all of my homies. When suddenly, out of nowhere, we were attacked by wild savages, tree people, shooting shooting pieces of wood at us. And also, a bunch of cavalry that were deployed on the other side of a lake. Anyway, I'm gonna go kill these guys now. Okay, all in all, things are going pretty good. This is where they mostly spawned in and attacked us from. Um, we can see how that's going for them right now. They did kind of flank us with some cavalry from across the lake, which at first I thought was just a hilarious misplay. But then I kind of forgot they existed, and, and so it kind of worked. But we're, we're reorienting ourselves, and uh, this should be... Yeah, we'll, we'll have this taken care of in no time. Also, we can see here, Olithanar himself is just really, really no match for, for Torox. He's, yeah, he's getting a train ran on him. This is nice, though. That's experience for us. Ooh, let's see how our new giant does. Oh, you'll fit right in. Yeah, you're great. Okay, after a little bit more slamming and smashing and ripping and tearing... The uh, High Elves are in full retreat. Oh shit, I think my guy died. Okay, so after fighting that battle, we've been awarded 8 points towards our next ritual. So if we can just keep doing this over and over again, we can rack up a lot of points. A little ironic now, the cows are farming you. Okay, I was trying to give Alithanar some time to rebuild his army so I could attack him again, but uh, you know what? The rage meter, it's just not its not working out. So I'm gonna go to Karankar and uh, take the fight to him. How the fuck is that possible? <laughs> I'm gonna lose these two. And then I give one of them a buff. And then I'm gonna lose three? Oh, what's that? You're gonna kill my units that I got for free? Oh no! How will I ever recover? Okay, okay, the ritual's getting more powerful. We are at a devastation of 14. That's nice. We're aiming for about 30. Oh! Oh yes. I'm just looking through my hero recruitment. 
Lakshi, you're gonna have to work on the name. He has unsated bloodthirst. Minotaurs gain 10% weapon strength. All Minotaurs in the army. That's huge. I don't even care. You don't even have to be able to cast any spells whatsoever. Just sit in the corner of the map and provide me that buff. This is gonna work out great. It's gonna be a terrific team. And now Alithanar looks like he's going to attack us again. Okay, we, we failed to spot his ambush, but something tells me it's not gonna make a difference. We're gonna slam them. We're gonna smash them. It's gonna be our raided. And this time I remembered about their little fancy maneuver where they had the cavalry attack me from over the river. So I, I kind of set up some spearmen there and I'll bring the chaos uh, giant as well. Everyone can get some. Oh, where, oh, where is my pretty little Alithanar? There he is. Torox is going to go introduce himself. <laughs> Alith Those guys weren't even attacking Alithanar. He just got pushed over by a bunch of bulls that were rushing to combat. This guy is really, he just doesn't have a battlefield presence. Okay, fantastic. Another W for the Beastmen. Okay, Alithanar, his army is in ruins. Technically, he survived, I think. This guy just cannot stop leading hundreds of thousands of people to their immediate demise and then somehow surviving with like 10 health. Like, someone needs to fire this guy. After that battle, we got up to 26 ruination. 26 devastation, rather. Quite nice. If I can finish off Alithanar's army and maybe this other army there, take out the Shrine of Elad uh, Ladriel, we'll, we'll be in a very good position. Ooh. That's not really great. The Sword of Cain has been claimed, and it's been claimed by Alariel the Radiant. She's, uh, she's gonna be one of our enemies not too long from now. Oh, that's a shame. The enemy failed to spot your ambush. Attack now and the element of surprise will give you the upper hand. Well, I think I'm gonna have to show him how a, how a proper ambush is conducted. I think it's only fair. Yeah, and it's pretty hard to lose a siege when that's happening. His knights are being chased around the battlefield by Torox, and uh, wow, okay, this is, yeah, this is going fabulous. I wouldn't change a thing about this ambush. Alithanar himself is having, like, a mental breakdown. He's not even shooting, he's just, he doesn't know what to do. He's just running around in random directions, jumping, spamming every button on his keyboard. He knows it's over. It's so over. And then he's dead. That's how you do an ambush, you little twerps. Better luck next time. Oh. Okay, well, some random Tomb Kings have decided to declare war on me because they have a minus 40 aversion to me, just racially, they really don't appreciate me. Normally, this would be something you'd be concerned about, but, like, I don't own anything. Like, there's nothing that you can do to me that is gonna bother me in any way. So, you know, go nuts, man. This is one of my settlements. Okay, if you think you can make it worse, like, be my guest. All right, Alithanar has basically rolled over and died at this point. Um, I, I don't blame him. It's, you know, I probably would do the same thing. He has one, uh, one settlement left, the Blacklight Tower, and a decomposing army. So I'm gonna go over there, finish him off, and then we'll just kind of take a look at what our next move is going to be. Oh, yes, and, um, we're gonna do this ritual for 36. It's pretty nice. So the ritual of ruin has been performed. We got 36 and that, okay, that puts us at ruination level three. So looking at this menu, we're going to have access to giants. We already have those chaos spawn, uh, beastagore herds with great weapons, gouge horns, beastagore herds. Yeah, it's the usual stuff. What's really, it's going to be exciting once we can get access to these guys and these guys. So we just got to keep pushing our tech forward a little bit at a time. Final attack on the black light tower here. Let's see how this goes over. Pyrrhic victory, medium casualties, easy. There's no greater pleasure in this entire world, I'm confident in saying this, than being able to auto-resolve a siege battle. And there we have it. Okay, at this point in the game, most of our immediate threats have been taken care of. We are still contending with a lot of people that don't like us, and some Tomb Kings that want to kill us, but they probably don't know how. So I think it might be reasonable to open up the Rewards of Dread, go over to Lords, and we're going to recruit a second Lord. Now these are these are legendary Lords, so you, you know, you probably want to start with them before you get into the unnamed randoms. I'm going to take Morgur the Shadowgrave. Now unfortunately what that does is it actually confederates me with them, and uh, his bestial rage is really, really low. I've never been so bad at the game that I've run into this issue, so I'm going to try, I'm going to, try to solve it on the fly. I I have no intention of playing in this region. So instead, I'm just going to abandon his entire army and uh, disband him and then recruit him. I'll re-recruit him up in this region. Okay, so from all the way across the world... <laughs> what? <laughs> from thousands of kilometers away, a man I've never met has come to me and he says, I have traveled far. The least you can do is listen. And then what he's asking, he's, he's demanding that I pay him money. <laughs> it's like someone from Romania traveling all the way to my house 
And then they're like, listen, you have to hear me out. And then they just threaten me. <laughs> I mean, that sounds in character, but I'm gonna... Oh, it will result in war. Oh, whatever will I do? The highly secluded wood elves that never leave their creepy little forest are gonna... <laughs> are gonna be at war with me. I'm, I'm quivering. Okay, the Tomb Kings that declared war on us earlier are... They're expanding. They're actually becoming a somewhat formidable faction. They're strength rank 15. I think they're... Yeah, they're one of the strongest ones I've met so far. I mean, I'm still not worried about them, but I'll, I'll definitely take the opportunity to kill them. But before I do that, I'm looking at my army. It's in a pretty good position. You know, I've got some decent units. I think I'm ready to finally fight that quest battle that was issued to me like 40 turns ago. So this is win the following battle with Torox the Brass Bull's army. And if we do this, we get a nominal amount of money, some casualty replenishment, the rune tortured axe. That's what I'm really after. And a lot of dread. So we'll go do this. I see, what did I tell you? What did I tell you? They say you have to fight one army. They say it's just going to be Eugene Dreadtongue. But then he brings his friends, Forkus, Piss Taker, and Movar Spiteheart. However, I think, yeah, we have we have Sporticus. So this is going to be this is just going to be a big, messy, disgusting battle. It should be interesting. Oh, they've got some Harganeth executioners. These guys are quite nasty. Whoever goes up against them is going to be beheaded. So I'm gonna probably just ungores maybe that I don't care about. Okay, the lines are crashing against each other. We're more than a match for them, especially once you take into account my minotaurs that are gonna be working on the right flank. They really don't have much to offer us in terms of resistance. Now, unfortunately, our last spellcaster was killed in a tragic motorcycle accident, but we've got a new guy and he can do this. So you could say it's all working out all right in the grand scheme of things, really. Now, the enemies have folded our left flank because they have those executioners there. It's kind of kind of predictable, but the important people are alive. More Death Knight revelers have joined the battle. Okay, yeah. So I see that what what's happening here is that everyone loves a good scrap. And the more people we kill, the more people are going to show up. So there's some people flanking us on the left side now. That never that truly never gets old. This is the gouge horns approaching these archers. I never got to see these guys in combat before. Yeah, oh, a, you know what? They have the they have the heart of a bull, just not the body. I respect that. The greenskins have j come to join us in this night of slaughter. The orcs are flooding across the field, and I I really don't see anything working out for our enemies here. I mean, my entire army has been devastated, but like I said, everyone everyone important is okay. Torox Torox doesn't even have a scratch on him. He's just running around slamming his head through people. Not even his horns, he's just impaling them with his, his bare head, which is like a real power move. And then some Norskins have also been drawn by the promise of great battle. Okay, yeah, this is just a just a fiesta in every sense of the word. Okay, I'm gonna have to lean on the orcs a little bit to carry me through this section of the battle because my just I don't have it enough units. Like my heroes and stuff, they'll be fine. But everyone else is like my giant's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with his giant, and it's not going so well for me. But it's okay, it looks like my orc friends are picking up the... picking up the slack. Yeah, this is nice. This works. Alright, after what can only be described as a sexually inappropriate amount of violence, we finally won. A hollow victory. Maybe we should just call it a loss. Well, I don't think so, because I now have access to this really, really powerful axe. As if I... You know, as if I was having any trouble chopping people up into bite-sized pieces before, it's gonna be really easy now. Alright, so to recap things so far, we are a psychotic barnyard animal that has strangled the life out of everyone that has ever come near us. This has given us a firm foothold in the region and allowed us to unlock several new and powerful units, as well as a legendary lord, Morgur Shadowgave. With this, I had Torox go north and start farming resources from the Dark Elves, and the only other faction standing in our way was the Tomb Kings, who I had largely forgotten even existed until they showed up at my settlement and started kicking the shit out of me. Okay. Tomb Kings are back. They're pretty pissed. But their army is of a fairly low caliber. Perhaps the lowest caliber army to have ever drawn breath on the face of this earth. In other words, I think I can kill them. We don't really have defensive structures per se, but they have to attack us here in order to capture the control. Oh, no, we do. We do get a tower. Okay. Yeah, this, this works. So 
I think I'm going to just try to hold them along this line, let them come through the choke point, and then, then I'll try to go for a wrap around. So let's see what we can do here. Put the people I don't care about. Yeah, they'll be like the first people to be shot to death. They're more than likely going to think that we're insane for leaving our flanks exposed, so they'll send these units in to attack us from behind, not realizing that behind them is a Razor Gore herd that is going to eviscerate them and eat their entrails. So that's the game plan. Tomb Kings, start the battle by advancing through the choke point towards us, where we will be ready to receive them. Quite a lot of Tomb Kings. Maybe maybe even a concerning amount of them. Oh dear. He appears to have identified my Razor Gore herds in the woods, because he's shooting them with artillery. I guess the jig is up. That's all right. These things are pretty nasty. Okay, the lines are just clashing now. Nothing too exciting, just a little preliminary cavalry charge, I guess. I'm able to goon up on his... Uh, Casket of Souls, which is quite nice. It's good to get this disabled early on in the fight. There's a few more units on this flank than I had anticipated, but I think we'll be all right. All right, this side, where it's time to spring the trap. I mean, it's not much of a trap. It's pretty obvious what I was planning to do, but our opponents walked right into it. They're clumping up really hard here, and now we're going to try to get a wrap around. That'll be a lot cooler if it wasn't so dark. Can't hardly see anything. He's got a couple of units that are, you know, strong enough to just plow through my own gores. But I think on the whole, we're taking an advantageous position. Oh god, no, there's way more reinforcements. This is way worse than I thought. I can't cope. Yeah, he's got the scorpions out now. It's not good when the scorpions come out. Morgur is working overtime to try to pick up the pieces here, but this is just really not looking great. Okay, so... We might have lost this one. The issue is they had the, all these archers and uh, it was hard to get around behind them because they were fighting by this big rock and I really wasn't anticipating so many reinforcements. So we're probably going to lose this herdstone. Wow, they, they, they managed to defeat us and you know what? They didn't even deploy as many units as us. We had about uh, 3,500. They had 27. Damn, we uh, misplayed. Okay, so that was a stressful and unexpected setback. With Mortar dead and our Herdstone destroyed, our enemies could start colonizing this region, which would set us back like 30 turns. I tried to bribe them with all the money I had gained from lobotomizing Dark Elves, but they weren't having it. So I put Torox in overdrive and had him begin a rampage through the Tomb King's territory. He was becoming so powerful by this point that I was just using him to solo entire enemy garrisons. Obviously, the bony freaks didn't appreciate this, and it all came to a ahead at this final battle. Oh, this is what I've been hoping for. The Tomb Kings, two on one against Torox. All of my army is half dead. I like these odds. Now this is a battle in a beast, uh, beast way because I was in that stance when they attacked me. Since it's in a beast way, I seem to be able to deploy like 90% of my army in a vanguard position, which means I'll be like right on top of the enemy's main army. I'll be able to close this gap in about 20 seconds. So we're just going to be rushing them. Okay, this is still fairly substantial enemy resistance. I'm not gonna say that this is nothing. Certainly not nothing. But I think rushing is our best chance here because we need to try to hit them before they get the reinforcements. The reinforcements are only going to make this harder. The Minotaurs are, I mean, they're getting pieced up a little bit just on account of them being largely alone, but they're, they're holding their own, which is good. Enemy reinforcements will be here soon, unfortunate. I'm gonna try to take out the Tomb King leader using Torox. Yeah, gaps in their line allow me to get into their archers. I've managed to get some, some monsters in their back line, which is helping. Oh, but what if I just, Use the purple sun. I've never seen like such a good use case for this in my entire life. Oh yeah, that's that's gangbusters. That's that's beautiful. I'm not gonna say this is a flawless performance, but I think we're going to be able to win this. Just based on like terror tactics and my enemy not being that good. Okay, we managed to kill some of their leadership. I think there's only one commander remaining. If we get him, the entire army's definitely going to crumble. The biggest mistake that the Tomb Kings, yeah, they're they're falling apart. Now the the mistake that they made was not stopping me. Like, if this gets in your back line, you've made a grave strategic miscalculation. Granted, I don't know how I would exactly stop that from, you know, he seems like the kind of thing that um, would be hard to do. Seems like the kind of monster that kind of goes where he wants, but uh, yeah, you gotta try to stop that. Beautiful. 
That's a nice win. All right, so let's do a quick overview here. It's turn 73. We don't have a lot to show for it, uh, but maybe that's the mark of a great Beastman player. We've castrated the Tomb Kings, so we have their scrotum. You know, they went from strength rank like 20 to 79, and the Dark Elves to our north, they're not so strong either. I mean, they, what are they at? 37? Forget about it. What I'm going to start doing now is posturing for a move into Ulthuan. I think this is going to involve an invasion of the Wood Elves because they hate us and it's, you know, it's going to happen eventually. So I may as well kind of kick things off on an advantageous note. Once we have the Wood Elves subjugated, we're going to work our way down these glades until we're somewhere around here, hop over here, and just start our colonization of Ulthuan. I've got all of the late game units that I think I'll need access to. I think we can do this now. So we're going to regroup a little bit here. We have, a, certainly we have a lot of armies and we're capable of doing some terrible things. Oh, Alariel. Hmm. Okay, Alariel has declared war on us. She's, a bit, she's aloof, safe and secure, away from the rest of the world. This leader is mostly unmoved by the fate of others. But apparently she's incensed to violence by the existence of beastmen. Um, okay, this is a little ahead of schedule, but I think we'll be okay. That's just one high elf faction. Who cares? So far, we haven't had any contact with Alariel the Radiant. She's just kind of staring at us angrily from across the water, and that's that's fine. Because we'll be over there probably in the next 10 turns to, uh, you know, deal with that. Okay, so things are going pretty well for us at this point. I mean, the Dark Elves are technically alive, like they have a pulse. It would be illegal to kill them, but just barely. The only issue is that we have the Wood Elves penetrating us from two positions, like a double-pronged dildo that also hates us, because we have <laughs> minus 241 relation with them. So you could say it's a complicated relationship, and um, I don't suspect that it's going to resolve peacefully. Otherwise, we're just going to spend the next few turns cleaning things up, and we should be good. Barbed Knuckle Boxing? <laughs> this is sweet. I love this faction. Like, I just realized my guy literally doesn't have a weapon. He just has chains wrapped around his fists, and he's going around punching people to death. <laughs> I couldn't... I couldn't write a better faction, honestly. This really is, like, the best faction for just fucking with people. Like, I'm destroying all your stuff, and I've also destroyed all my stuff already, so you can't even, like, retaliate. Just seethe. That's all you can do. Yeah! It's about time, you big dumb bitch. The Sisters of Twilight have declared war on us. So this, this is about to get interesting. As far as I know, this is going to be a nightmare matchup for me because the Sisters of Twilight, they're wood elves, okay? So like the, the degeneracy is on a whole nother level. In order of degeneracy, the, I would say the, the dark elves are the least degenerate because they're at least open and honest about being sex-addled freaks. And then the High Elves are somewhere in the middle for their degeneracy. Something about them just creeps me out. But definitely the top of the list for, you know, complete absence of morality is the Wood Elves. They specialize in this kind of guerrilla warfare hit and run tactics and they use a lot of archers. You don't have to be a very good archer to hit a Gorgon, for example. We're going to be absorbing a lot of fire. But luckily they're some kind of pacifists because they seem to be incredibly underleveled. The Sisters of Twilight, their army's right here. They're level 15. They haven't been doing a whole lot, clearly, because Torox is level 38, and I'm going to go absolutely annihilate them. They 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 tried to ambush the Plane of Spiders. That's You've played yourself, I'm afraid. Okay, they're trying to run away. I hate to break it to you, but running exactly 12 feet is not going to dissuade me from pulling off your head. Yeah, this is it's just a decisive victory. You know what, guys? In the interest of time, I would usually just auto-resolve this, but it's important in life to appreciate the little things. Sometimes you have to pet a cat on the side of the road. Sometimes you have to smell a rose. And sometimes you have to crush your enemies with your bare hands. You have to enjoy it, all right? These are the things that keep us alive. So I'm going to enjoy this. God, this is half of my army right here. It's just this. <laughs> Such easy uh, management. I kind of love it. All right, very good. Here we go. Straight down the pipe. The rocks are landing. Pretty good. Minotaur advancing through the woods. They're still undetected right now. They're, they get pretty close before being detected. Our enemy does have some flying units, which are like kind of bothersome just because I I, I have no um, ranged units whatsoever. I've just kind of given up on that. Maybe we can throw some boulders at them. I guess that might technically work. Yeah, our enemies are not having a great time. <laughs> That's so good. Eventually, once once we kill all of the ground units, they will be forced to land, and they're not going to like what's waiting for them. Okay, no, they've decided not to land, they just gave up. 
They flew away with full health. You know what? Something tells me um, this isn't going to be as hard as I thought it was. We lost two models. They only have one kill. So 50% of our casualties were friendly fire. That's pretty nice. Uh, I'm impressed with myself. And I think we can have this wrapped up. I mean, there's what, like seven settlements? Not too bad, actually. This is a walk in the park. And now we can, we can focus all of our attention on the wood elves. Venom Glade, easily captured. Medium casualties, okay. Torox is going to plow through to the Temple of Ada Ioth, which I struggled to pronounce even after three attempts. And what we're going to do is turn this into a herdstone, and then that'll give us, I think, a blood grounds over pretty much all of the Wood Elf territory. Oh, this is in an existing blood ground, so I can't make it here. Okay, so I'll have to make one at Vol's Anvil, I think. Oh no! The end game crisis! The Wild Hunt. Now, fortunately, I don't think I turned the difficulty setting up too high, because there's only two armies. They're pretty good armies. But I think we can take them. Okay, the Wood Elves are taking both of their armies to Hag Hall, and from there I think they're going to try to attack me at Vol's Anvil. Now Malagor is he's definitely not ready for that, which is unfortunate, but I think Torox can like 4v1 at this point, so not a big deal. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm gonna put my balls on the table. Torox is right next to a big garrison. The Sisters of Twilight, both of these armies, and uh, let's see if they take the bait. Oh, they're taking the bait! I've distracted them from Vol's Anvil by getting them to attack three-on-one Torox. Let's try it. This is supposed to be a decisive defeat. I think there's a good chance everyone's going to die, but Torox is like, he's such an animal. He's such a laser-brained, cum-slut, sex-pot. <laughs> he already used that joke. Let's let's see what happens. Oh no, we're in um we're in the beast path because I was in the the um the beast path stance. So it's going to be a nice tight narrow area for us to fight. It's not clear if that's going to be to my advantage yet. I mean, it will simplify things, but it'll also probably help them bottleneck us. Two enemy reinforcements are coming in right next to me. So I'm thinking I just wait for these armies to arrive. I'll literally just sit here and wait for them. Oh, the Saigor has an ability. What does this one do? Warp gaze. Oh, that's terrible. He can petrify his enemies so they can't move. So imagine you've got this thing like 20 feet from you, then suddenly you're unable to move, but you're able to watch him slowly pick up a gigantic fucking 3,000 pound boulder, put it on his shoulder and launch it at you. And you just have to stand there and take it. They're going to come in they're going to have a very bad time because they're all ranged units. The main enemy army appears to be taking an aggressive posture against us. I think they know what I'm trying to do. So they're trying to get to me and stop me from killing all of their reinforcements. But if they want to do that, they're going to have to eat a few boulders on entry. Good luck with that, fellas. I think the Wood Elves are giving up. Uh, yeah, I think they're taking a defensive stance. They've realized they're not going to make it in time to save their reinforcements, so they're just going to wait for these ones over here, 15 seconds. So now that they have these reinforcements, it's going to be a lot easier for me to hit them with boulders because there's so many more Wood Elves. Okay, here we go. They're coming onto the map. I've got this area pretty congested with Minotaurs. They're high mass entities, so like very difficult to kind of push your way through them. Okay, so all of the enemies coming in at this gnarled, old, corrupted, pus oozing tree. Yeah, they're, they're being killed. I think the Sisters of Twilight themselves are dead currently. Everything else is charging across the field in a pretty unorganized kind of pattern. Still more reinforcements coming through here, so I gotta keep most of my guys there, but I'm gonna start pulling off some Minotaurs, because we're gonna have to receive all these enemy reinforcements. This is what I was worried about, just so many enemy archers. It's just an absolute fiesta over here. I'm, Torox is in on it. He's going insane. Oh, yes. Yes, we're getting the purple sun of Xerus right in there. Oh, it's it's so good. Just gonna keep spamming the purple sun on these guys. We've got some good matchups too, though. Like, their tree man is being... Okay. Supposed to be getting messed up by our Gorgon. Oh, God. Torox is, like, not a scratch on him, so this is good. More enemy reinforcements are arriving from this position. That's not great. I thought we had seen the last of them. Okay, everyone's starting to crumble a little bit here. This isn't great. Still, I'm... I'm, I'm putting a lot of faith in Torox because he, he's, he hasn't taken like any damage yet. I can't even fucking tell what's going on here. I'm trying to determine if it's worth nuking this place, but it's just everyone's covered in blood. Everyone's covered in everyone else's entrails. <laughs> it's such a mess. The Wood Elves are, the, look how tenacious they are. They're, they're being slaughtered down to the last man. Like every single unit here has a, an absolute sliver of health left and they're steady. They're a little tired. Like, they're not breaking. Okay, Torox is managing to assassinate some of their leaders. Very good. It's just... It's just Torox and the heroes now. 
The heroes are gone. It's just Torox. Torox is the only thing left on the field, but he's an unbre- He's wavering. <laughs> I was just about to say, he's unbreakable. He's Torox never gives up. He fucked that one up a little bit. I mean, we got a lot of kills. We got hundreds of kills on most of our units. I'm not sure which army I'd rather have been in. They both got pretty messed up. But I think we can actually probably push the fight on the next battle and win. Oh, they're coming after us again. You people are out of your mind! Torox is going to turn himself into a cannonball and plow right through you. No, this isn't- this isn't going to be a Pyrrhic victory. This is going to be me sending Torox in by himself and soloing your army. Torox is going to mangle these poor people. Everyone else just kind of hides over here, I think. Yeah. Okay, Sisters of Twilight are dead. Torox is just getting mobbed by Hawk Riders. He hits them once, and he's like, really? Do you guys you guys really want to do this? And they're like, no. No, we don't. Ooh. Damn, shame if someone killed you. Yeah, victory. Sweet. Okay, so what's the back shot off of all of this? Well, Torox kind of sacrificed himself by throwing himself headfirst into a wood elf uh, death trap. And his army is in shambles. But the nice thing is that the wood elf armies are also in shambles. I mean... Most of them are like five to seven units. Half of them are dead. So Torox is going to pull out, take a little vacation. He's earned it. And we're going to swap out for Malagor the Dark Omen and um, Morgur the Shadow Gave. They're going to start taking a more active stance in this theater of war. Oh wow, we got our ass kicked so badly that the buildings are damaged. What the fuck? I didn't even realize that was possible. <laughs> What elves are trying to rebuild their armies, but they're, they're contending with so much. They're contending with a lot of plague damage. It's kind of slowing them down. And Morgur is pushing on the Witchwood here. He's got a... I mean, it's a stupid army, but it's full health, which is more than the Wood Elves can say. So let's see how they handle this pressure. Oh, I think he's going to go for it. He's going to try to fight Morgur the Shadow Gave. This will be interesting. Morgur is not nearly as tough as Torox, but I think I can still mess them up a little bit. Alternatively, I run away. Maybe I run away. Looking at this army right now, and I'm like, ah, oh, yes. The army full of random things. That's always a dangerous one. I'll run away. This one's a lot better. Yeah, I'll take this auto-resolve. Okay, so that was a Pyrrhic victory auto-resolve at the uh, Ice Gorge. Okay, yeah, see, now his, his armies are split up a little bit, I think. There's got to be someone in an ambush stance. Almost definitely. Oh no, my army failed to spot an enemy ambush. I think we can take these guys. Without their reinforcements, I think we can take them. Okay, our enemies took a really weird approach here. They put half their guys over here, half them over here. We're just gonna go over here. Okay, his idea of splitting his army up, it's not going so well for him because he lacked any front line whatsoever. So my chaos spawn are sprinting through the woods and pulling apart his archers. You know your enemy messed up pretty badly when you have units that are in sleep mode. E either you're messing up or your enemy is. That's one of two options. Fantastic, this battle is just about over. It's really just the Sisters of Twilight left, and they're going to have to hit the ground soon. I <laughs> love how these guys shamble. Oh, and then you, you think that, oh, well, they're just shambling, and then they break into the full sprint and it's too late. <laughs> Land, you fucking pussy. Everyone's dead. Everyone's gone home. He's just cheating at this point. It literally says, the enemy's in control of the battlefield, you must attack by land. No, I don't think I will. Okay, well, I guess I'll just wait for him to land. There he goes. He's a pretty good melee combatant. I I'm referring to it as a him, but I'm pretty sure it's actually just two women and a dragon. But anyway, it doesn't matter. He's wavering. He's going to give up soon. There it is. Okay, with that, the Wood Elves are now completely in disarray. Um, the Sisters of Twilight, their army is neutered. Everyone else is pretty much dead. We just need to complete a finishing blow by taking the witch wood, killing off uh, Storag Core, and then that, that'll do it for them, I think. There's a chance that these Dark Elves to the south might decide they want to kill us. That'd be pretty, like, pretty not great. They're the second most powerful faction in the game. Oh well. You know what, I, you can't worry about these things. You're just a giant bull man. Just go around and kill people. Don't make it more complicated than it has to be. Torox is going to now finish off the Witchwood. Not even an issue. On the other side of the map, the Wood Elves are probably going nuts and killing a bunch of people. And technically I'm at war with them. But I, you know what, that really just doesn't bother me. I'm, I'm way over here. It's not my problem. I'm seeing some pretty interesting upgrade options here um, 
for our infrastructure, we can build things like the mound of blades and the pile of flesh. <laughs> is that just... Is that what my construction is? It's just piles of different objects? Mound of blades, pile of flesh, heads on spikes? Okay, that's like at least a little more architecturally involved. But they give us cool uh, army abilities, such as Vile Entropy, drains something's ammunition, reduces its range 50%, touched by the moon, huge buff, 40% physical resistance, 50% damage pretty much across the board. Oh, deals severe damage upon expiry. I see. So phase one gives you all these really cool buffs, and phase two deals 37,000 damage per second for 45 seconds. Gonna have to be careful about using that one, but I'll take it. That sounds pretty nice. I'm gonna take a hero and, and try to put him in Althwan and just see what's going on over there. Okay, this is their last settlement. Wood Elves, now officially homeless. I mean, I don't think that that's going to affect them very much. They seem like the type of people that would be okay with living on the street and ingesting bath salts as their primary method of nourishing their body. All right, so to recap, our antisocial personality disorder has manifested in us killing all of our neighbors, leaving only vast swaths of rubble in every direction. Now, it's time to launch our war against the most sexually ambiguous man on the planet, Tyrion. Look, I don't have an issue with homosexuals. In fact, they constitute 90% of my Discord server. However, it's the ambiguity that I just can't stand. Because if I don't know what your intentions are with my penis, then you're simply too dangerous to be left alive. So we're going to go over to Althwan, perform a demographical restructuring, and call it a day. But first, an overview of our military. Malagor has a unique army composition that I like to call random bullshit. Morgur has cavalry and anti-infantry chaos spawn. Torox is fielding a variety of monsters and minotaurs. And finally, Kazrak is bringing in the siege weapons along with thousands of level 1 spearmen. With that, we hopped on a series of mobilized garbage platforms and set sail, with the next 20 turns looking something like this. We landed on Ulthwan's beaches, realized most of the elves were some kind of underleveled pacifist morons, killed a whole bunch of them, briefly paused to make fun of Morathi's army. Morathi, what the fuck happened to your army? <laughs> Do you want to talk about it? spread a whole bunch of chaos corruption just by existing, and then punched through the Phoenix Gate and established our first herdstone. Alright, herdstone is down. Now this is a level 4 herdstone, which is quite nice. Unfortunately, one of our slots is taken by a largely useless port. I'm going to upgrade for Winds of Malady. Every one of our enemies in the Blood Grounds is going to become tired. Oh, oh, this is a bummer. This doesn't work how I wanted it to work. I was hoping that the Blood Grounds would project outward, but it just mostly seems to be focused on the inner ring. I'm gonna need a series of Blood Grounds, some on the inside, some on the outside. Totally do it. It's workable. It's fine. Torox is going to go over to the Shrine of Kurnos and establish a Blood Grounds there. Upgrade this one as well. We're here now, and I think that the only, like, really, the only true honorable move is to just stand up for what we believe in. I don't just hate Alariel, I hate all elves. So I'm going to declare war on all of the high elves. Starting with you, and uh, finishing with you, because you were allied to all of the other elves. Anyway, we're gonna go with the buddy system. Kazrak is gonna stay near Morgur at all times, and they're going to farm the inner ring for as much violence as they can, and uh, Torox is going to hang out up here on the outer ring and uh, do the same, basically. Okay, Kazrak is taking Whitefire Tor. Close victory with medium... If really, like, really, it's a close victory with medium casualties? Just on principle, I'm going to fight this. I mean, this is not the most effective army, but goddamn if it's not enjoyable. <laughs> There's no way that they're even gonna reach us. Medium casualties my ass. This is going spectacular. I love the rock-sized hole that we, we just plow through there. <laughs> and then it takes a few minutes before anyone's willing to fill it. They're like, ah, oh, I don't know. Worked so well last time. Okay, things are coming together pretty good. Evershale is gathering devastation. Now, just a reminder, like, devastation is... It's important. It basically progresses us as a society. And right now we're about middle of the road. We need to get all the way to 500. And that will unlock for us the final battle. What is the final battle? I, I really don't know. I'm curious to find out, and I won't consider this campaign complete until I do. Okay, I'm gonna put my balls on the table here. Torox, he's rushing Tor on Lek, and he's not able to attack it this turn. My balls have just been placed on the table, and they're about to be hit with a sledgehammer, because I'm pretty sure I'm gonna lose my herdstone here, but that's all right. Did you give the Sword of Cain to a level 7? 
Yeah, okay, so these absolute lobotomites gave the Sword of Cain to a level 7, and it's in the dominating phase. I don't know exactly what that means, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure this girl is going insane. I should, really, I should just go kill her and put her out of her misery. In this campaign, the elves, they're all fairly underleveled. It seems like no one bothered to challenge them very much. This is why bullying is necessary, okay? If someone had have just, you know, fucked with the elves a little bit, they wouldn't be level 7, level 8, level 19 on like turn 300. Okay, now look, Alariel the Radiant has just attacked me. She has two armies. Technically, I could, I could take a Pyrrhic victory auto resolve with high casualties, and that's probably better than what I can do manually here, but I, I don't think that's what we came for. I think we came to see high elf casualties. So we're gonna really see it. It's gonna be visceral. Her reinforcements will be arriving in three minutes because we have a couple points in lightning strike. So that increases the uh, time it takes them to arrive here. And with a bit of vanguard deployment, I think I'll be able to close the distance on her quite quickly. So let's just go for it here. Okay, the cows are charging. He's just offered his reavers to me on a silver platter. So I'm going to accept that. Okay, the cows are charging downhill. I've also got some on the flank. Okay, his reinforcements are still not here for another minute. And, you know, things are just not going so great for him. She's trying, but there's only so much you can do when there's, uh, you know, people hitting you with great axes and stabbing you with spears and draining the life out of you with arcane magic. It puts a pretty big limiter on what you're able to accomplish. Torox is absolutely ruining the Phoenix Guard, which are otherwise, you know, pretty strong units. These reinforcements are going to start arriving now. I'm going to try to kind of beat them to the punch with these. I have three squads of Minotaur that are very fresh, so I'm going to plow them right into the reinforcements because a lot of these things, you know, they're going to be archers, so we can kind of stuff them up against the wall. That'll be perfect. Battle's pretty much over here against Alariel's main army. Okay, that's a victory. Wasn't so bad. We just had to um, crush a few people's skulls beneath our uh, hooves, chase a few innocent men through the woods. Yeah, we got them. Lord Croak is up here? That's not how you use Lord Croak, my dude. <laughs> He's not an agent. Oh god, they're they're all around Evershale as well. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six armies near Evershale. Three or four armies near Torox. This is this is dangerous. You won't. There's no way you're gonna attack me here. You won't do it. He's thinking of oh my god, there's four stacks. Okay. There's so many enemies around us right now, it's it's troubling. So Eltharian has sieged me. Their leaders are terrible, so I'm hoping I can morale shock them a little bit, but the actual units in the armies are fairly good, except for these these brats are gonna stay in no chance. They're gonna leave as soon as I kill the leader. It's gonna be great. On our side, we have just a garrison mostly, so I was going to fight this battle, which wouldn't be so bad. It would take time and it would possibly kill my Gorbul, but instead I'm just going to take an auto-resolve uh, lightning strike here. So we're basically isolating this one army away from his reinforcements. We don't get our reinforcements either, but it's just way more favorable to us like this. So we'll snatch up that auto-resolve. And this is all going actually quite according to plan. Like they're coming right to me, right into the blood grounds. And we're, um, we're just jumping them. Oh, this is just ridiculous. <laughs> All three of them rolled up together and I'm just gonna lightning strike them one at a time. Now, unfortunately, this last one I'm gonna actually have to fight because the auto-resolve is gonna kill my hero and I just, I can't, personally, I can't deal with that right now. Eventually, he's going to give her enough CTE that it's going to become lethal. She's going to accumulate so much brain damage. <laughs> It's just slamming her head first into trees. I can't even watch this. Oh, she's dead. So the high elf resistance is not proving to be as effective as they were hoping. All right, that takes care of most of Eltharian's stuff. Eltharian himself is actually fairly well leveled. You know, he's level 30. That's not terrible. And he's waiting for me in this um, walled settlement. I'm in no rush to push him. I'm just going to keep developing these herd stones, upgrading them, getting a stronger and stronger garrison, and improving their effects. Oh, okay. We got a little lucky here. Zil Nilin has failed to spot the ambush that uh, we were setting up. And that's just not going to... Not gonna go so well for him because there's three armies of beastmen that he accidentally walked right into. Bro's done. He's cooked. I'm gonna try to bait these guys. They don't seem very like perceptive to my ambushes. So I'm gonna hide Torox up here. Maybe they won't notice him. Oh my god, these AI are insane, dude. 
Your army was spotted by the enemy before it could spring its ambush. You have an opportunity to intercept and engage them in battle. Yeah, I think I will intercept and engage them in battle. Okay, I managed to lure Eltharion out of his little hiding place. He thought the shrine of Kurnos was um, vulnerable, but he's wrong, and now I'm going to kill him for it. The enemy failed to spot your ambush. Oh, man. <laughs> Is it going to be an ambush battle, too? You're, it's not your day. Eltharion, it's really not your day. I feel like when you're fighting the legendary lord of another faction, you kind of want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. You want to measure your meat against theirs. They seem to have put some kind of a prison spell on Torox. He's unable to move. That's not bad. I mean, that's slowing me down a bit. We managed to get around to his archers on this side here, and if it wasn't for the purple sun draining the soul out of them, well, I don't really like their odds otherwise anyway, so... The enemy army is in various shades of full retreat. There's really not much going well for them at the moment. Eltharion is getting 1v1'd by Torox, and he's just given up. And there he goes. They died before the reinforcements even arrived. This was a pretty thorough beatdown of the High Elves. The enemy failed to spot my ambush again. Oh man. Okay, I just chased them down, ambushed them again, so that army's totally done. Eltharion's going to be... He's going to be in the penalty box for a few turns. And our rampage is, is starting to pick up finally. Let's pick a reward. Kind of like this. Enemy leadership minus eight in Torox's local region. That's nice. I literally saw this faction. I was like, oh, they look simple. I won't have to read much, right? Like, we've really weakened up the initial wave of resistance here. I think I can start pushing our borders a little further with these, uh, the blood grounds. Now, this is a little concerning. However, Torox is ready to claim his birthright. Three high elf armies attacking Torox. Yeah, let me know how that bow works out, guy. Yeah, why not? Why not a decisive victory? The sword calls to you. Oh, wow, that's nice. You son of a bitch. Die, die, give up. Die, 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 die. I was supposed to have the High Elves killed like 50 turns ago, and if I don't kill the High Elves within the next 30 turns, I'll probably just kill myself. Fuck this, I'm taking my shirt off. Three lizard men army. Something is sinking in to me. Possibly a fucking railroad spike. Easy win. We're auto-resolving our way through this. Decisive defeat. Do you know who I am? Yeah, this is great. This is brutal. <laughs> this isn't even a fight, man. Never come back. Uh. <laughs> oh, no. This is just this is a second channel video, and I've been like 25 hours of recording. Like, fuck this, man. <laughs> I think it's time to, to get a little help out here. Alright, so I started going a little crazy for a while there, but that's in the past, because I've done some things that I'm not particularly proud of, and the lizards no longer want to kill us, and the wood elves are decomposing in a series of weighted bags at the bottom of the ocean. So now, we can finally focus on finishing what we came here to do. Okay, it's turn 140. And it's finally time to go. It's finally time to take out the Dark Elves. With the Dark Elves gone, Ulthuan will be ours, and the world will be safe again. So, let's get moving on that. Alright, Marathi, it's been real. It's been a really fun time watching you slowly infest the territory that I'm trying to purify, but I think now I'm just going to kill you. Let's declare war. Oh, they're allies with the Khemri. It's like mildly annoying. So this is going to be Torox against Marathi. This is a close victory, medium casualties, but you know what? I'm a nice guy. I'm going to give her the, the chance to at least fight us um, in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Because she's level 50, I'm level 50. Let's see what happens. She has some pretty good equipment. Her army sucks, though. <laughs> her army is trash. I'm just curious to see how she stacks up against Torox. Alright, running it down. Straight down the middle. I think that they're one of the strongest factions in the game, and so am I. This is my strongest army, by far. I think this is one of their weaker ones, except for the fact they have a level 50 Marathi. So let's see how this translates in combat. Minotaur are just going to smash right into her front line, or stop right in front of it too. That's kind of anticlimactic, my bad. Otherwise, you know, things are going pretty good. Torox is plowing down the middle here. Okay, I'm trying to get my way into Marathi. That sounded kind of bad. I'm trying to get my- I'm trying to make my way to Marathi here. It's a real fiesta of just violence. Torox is at full health. 
Marathi's about 40, 30... Okay, dropping fast. She's she's not holding up so well against Torox here with the Sword of Cain. I can't even really visually identify where she's at, but you can see her icon up there. She's not doing so great. All right, well, this was over <laughs> in like 30 real-life seconds. That's great. Decisive victory, low casualties at Ball's Anvil. Perfect. Plenish. Attack this one. Decisive victory, low casualties. Okay, perform this ritual. No one can settle there. Morker, the Shadow Gave. Up here, Pyrrhic victory. Oh, I could definitely do better, but I really don't want to do a siege battle with cavalry, so I'll take this. Make a Hearthstone. He'll sit on it. Okay, Torox is just plowed through, like... Uh, Marathi, Vol's Anvil, Torsithai, Averthir. I'm losing momentum the more I do this, technically speaking. Now, the Dark Elves have lost their main commander in this region, but they do still have several armies scattered about. Many of them are in some level of disrepair, I think from attrition and maybe some combat they were in. So if I can just clean them up, we'll be in a really good position here. In fact, Kazrak is very close to Lothurn. I kind of want to go for it. I think I'm going to go for this. This is the main, um elven city the game doesn't want to give us this it wants to be a close defeat but i think we're going to fight it i think we're going to win all right here we are this is the one and only lothern very lovely castle it's about to become a lot less lovely because i'm going to pelt it with gigantic boulders the enemies are trying to kind of counter siege us with their towers here it's working to some effect yeah see that that we don't like that but eventually you are going to run out of towers I guess counter-argument is eventually I'm going to run out of boulders. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. I was targeting these archers, but the harpies got in the way, so they started getting clipped by the boulders. <laughs> oh god, they're going- yeah, they're responding quite violently to my entrance, but that's totally fine. We just needed them to blob up so I could spell them. I could get some uh, spells on them, and they, they did that exactly. All right, I'm ready for the ground invasion with um, my Ungor herd. The Dark Elves are calling in some bombardments on us using their uh, nearby black arcs. Basically just artillery strikes. God damn, they have a lot of monsters here. It's just unfit. Okay, we killed an enemy lord. My my lord here, Kazrak the One-Eye, he's just, just hanging on by a thr- Ah, shit. He's broken. He's getting out of here. He's <laughs> negative four leadership. He's probably not coming back. Oh, no, he came back. Anything happens to this man, he's just, he's done. We're both fairly beat up, and we're just throwing everything we have into this one last push. We're so close. We're so goddamn close. Why won't you people just die? <laughs> I don't want to do this. You're forcing my hand, okay? You're basically bashing your own brains out with these fucking boulders. Just give up. Well... That's all she wrote. Alright, so we got, like, just a little bit ahead of ourselves at the Battle of Lothurn, as evidenced by the fact that everyone in our army has either one health or they're dead, uh, but the enemies are similarly decomposing. No one really won this battle, but we especially didn't win it. I'll be back, though. They're damaged, they're vulnerable. Wait. Do I just go back and do it again? <laughs> Do I just attack Lothurn again? Oh, dude, I'm doing it. I'm doubling down. All of my Saigors will reload their ammunition. You can't convince me this isn't going to work. I won't listen to it. Oh, God. Oh, God, they're shooting. Oh, God, they're shooting. This is bad. I gotta get out of here. This is a mistake. <laughs> okay, so... Not ideal, but we've managed to destroy most of their towers, and we still have, what, six Saigors remaining? Now... But, you know, we lost, I don't know, three maybe. Now we can start blasting them with these boulders. The game doesn't want to believe in the Saigor cheese victory, but I need to believe in it. Snipe, you pussies. <laughs> Where he is going, boys? You don't like my method of warfare? All right, now I have to execute the very dangerous part of this plan, which is where I take my 164 health Bray Shaman, I ride him right up to the <laughs> opponent's walls, and then I start spamming Spirit Leech on them in an attempt to kill them. The resilience of the Dark Elves is just, like, astonishing. I played the Dark Elves recently, they weren't that good. I mean, maybe I wasn't that good, but didn't feel like this. I'll just, I'll say that much. It did not feel like this. Okay, so, um, Bray Shaman died. Oh, okay, we're getting her to land outside of the city gates. I'm assuming that she's the only thing holding all of them together, and 
if I can get her to just stop breathing, then maybe everyone else will... Oh. Oh, wow, okay. This might work. One more. Try again. Yes. Ideal. She's dead. Please, give up. Everyone else. There's, there's nothing here for you. God, why? Why? What have I done to forsake you, Lord? That this is this is my experience that I'm having right now. Oh no. They have an eagle bolt throwers. Oh no. It's full health. It can just like one shot my guys. I am vanquished. I have nothing left to give. Lothern. <laughs> okay, bro, you you deserve Lothern. You can have it. Alright, so in a stunning attempt to provoke a mental breakdown, I kind of gaslit myself into believing that I could take Lothern on the second attempt. Anyway, here we are. I'll get him next time. Can I- wait, can I go back again? You- you're out of your goddamn mind if you think I'm not coming back again, you dumb son of a bitch. Go! I'm gonna fucking kill you. That's right, you're going in, buddy. You're going in. You're gonna- you're gonna kill the Shades. You're gonna do it, buddy. This is their commander right there. Chase him down. Chase him down. 344 health, Kazrak. Making the difference. Yes. Okay. Their commander's dead. Yes. Yes. Artillery support. Danger close. This is what it's all been leading up to, boys. There's like no one left. Turn around. Turn around. Mm, Should have turned around. I had to warn you. I'm pretty sure there's just fucking bolt throwers now. There they are. The bolt throwers, the last sign of resistance. They're even firing at us. Damn, they took out one of my Cygors. Damn, all right, they got my last Cygor. <laughs> it's getting desperate now, fellas. It's down to Kazrak to clutch this along with my Minotaur. All right, everyone, put the buffs on. Time to go. We're rounding this corner. That's where they're going to be waiting for us. The tower is also there. We're taking immediate fire from the tower. We're charging. Surely if we kill every living thing on the map, then we'll have to get the victory then. They can't deny us any further, can it? These are very, very weak enemies, but they're somehow... Oh my god, we did it! We did it! Kazrak with 100 health, my Minotaur with 68. We broke them. Oh, thank Christ. You could call it a Pyrrhic victory, I suppose. It might be fair. <laughs> Oh, man. You know, the fucked up thing is that they just have reinforcements that are just gonna show up next turn. <laughs> okay, but the good thing is this is a part of a blood grounds. I'm going to loot it, and now it's it, it, there. It's secured. It's ours now. Kazrak, take a take a break, buddy. You've, you've earned a, a day off or something. Okay, so this is, I think, the f still the first turn of my war against the Dark Elves, and we cleaned out almost all of their holdings. We need to get them at the Shrine of Assyrian... They have four places left here, and then we can consider Ulthuan safe. Secure, even. Oh, right, I may as well, I've got some armies here. I may as well just hit them back home. Really put the pressure on them all around. I'm still in disbelief about Lothard. <laughs> that was unreal. No, dude, go fuck yourself, seriously. I mean that too. All right, let's see. It's the Cult of Pleasure's turn. This is the first turn they have available after having the war declared on them. Let's see what they decide to do. How do, how do you react to what just happened? Okay, they're just kind of orbiting right now. Their naval presence is nothing to scoff at, but I am a I am a deranged lunatic, a man on a mission, and I'm not going to stop. I will not stop until the world is safe from the pacifist high elves that have been terrorizing us for these many, many years. Their moral grandstanding, their high culture, ridiculous. Okay, they, they really did nothing with their turn. Okay, Shrine of Assyrian, done. Okay, Tordranil, done. White Peak, Torox is moving on White Peak. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Okay, the Dark Elves have only one settlement remaining, and it's right here, Unicorn Gate. It's being held by Shielda, the Dire Overseer, and some dickhead with a... That's my... <laughs> That's my champion's essence. I, I bought that for 10,000 gold. Give that back, you son of a bitch. Okay. Needless to say, we're going to kill them. Now, right now, I've got them surrounded by Gallic, um, Morgher, and Pube. Pube the Man Seeker? <laughs> oh, man. We'll, we'll get you fixed up later. All right, this is the last holdout of Dark Elves. 
Oh, oh no, you failed to spot the ambush. Actually, I don't give a fuck. And then a unicorn gate. Okay, easy win. Oh, fuck, that's beautiful. All right, there you have it. Ulthwan is no more. We don't have to worry about the high elves. We have something way better, which is like a feral society of rabid animals. You know, I'm, I'm a protector of sorts. I have these herd stones here. No one's going to be able to settle any of these ruins as long as the herd stones are here. So I'm just going to put an army in every herd stone to protect it. And, you know, that combined with the garrison, I think will make this island virtually unassailable. So, mission accomplished. The only thing left to do here is we're at the max ruination level. It unlocked the final battle. So we're going to just go ahead and see what the final battle is. And I can't think of anyone I'd rather do the final battle with than Torox himself. Let's see what happens. Okay, this is good. The final battle, fittingly, is against the French. And also Karl Franz, but mostly the French. Let's do this. We've got some reinforcements too. Kill the enemy lord to rout their forces. Oh, like that's... <laughs> Man, say less. That's all I'm good at with Torox. We have some Beastmen allies on the right side. You can see <laughs> they're level 17. Oh, we're grossly overleveled for this mission. The enemies are level 17, which implies that I should be around level 17. I'm level 50 with the best army in the game. So this should be fun. The Empire is deploying artillery on the hill. Yeah, they. That, I'll say this one thing. Is they do have the advantageous position of being at the top of a hill. We have to approach from underneath. Not great for us. Our reinforcements seem to be tackling the French largely by themselves, but I'll lend them some minotaurs to help, uh, you know, ease the burden of it. This just feels like a nice, a nice little treat. You know, like when you have a hard day's work and then you buy yourself a tub of ice cream? This is my tub of ice cream right now. Bretonia flanked the war herd with Pegasus Knights. You see, there's always more. They're always up to something. Oh, meanwhile, Carl Franz is... Carl Franz was fighting <laughs> Thorox. Torox is going to reposition and um, take out these reinforcements, and then we should be in a very strong position, let's say. All right, who's left? Who is left out here? Lewin. You gotta go assassinate him, and that should put an end to all of this nonsense. Go, Torox, go. Go. He's right there, buddy. Just for dirt, use the Sword of Cain on your teammates. You don't have to tell anyone about that, though. That's just between you and me. Yeah, it's just a, just a little, little trick I learned. Oh, you're not going anywhere, Lu- Okay, I guess he is, he flew. That, yeah, that's the one thing, I'll, I'll give them that, I can't fly. I'm working on it, I can jump, can't fly yet. Opportunity for more friendly fire? Always take it. The gap between you and your teammates has to be as wide as possible. Without units on the ground, the enemy's forced to land. Oh, did you hear that, Lewin? Did you hear that you're going to be forced to land now? Decisive victory. Well, there you have it. With the final quest battle completed and the High Elf Menace completely eradicated, we can finally rest easy knowing that our labor has made the world a safer and more progressive place for all peoples, except elves and skeletons, pirates, lizards, all Europeans. But for everyone else, it's great. Finally, don't forget to download War Thunder using my link below to receive your premium vehicles, XP boost, premium account, and a preposterous amount of silver lions. That's all for now. See you later.